We're talking with Dr. Gene Overholt, board certified gastroenterologist, and we're going to be talking about balloon therapy. Gene, welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Thank you, Bob. Tell me about the balloon therapy for weight loss. Well, what is it? Well, it's a balloon that's inserted into the stomach through with a scope, but it's important to understand it's only one part of a comprehensive program that is to encourage patients to change their lifestyle and their attitudes toward eating and exercise. It's an important part, but it's only one of three parts. So the three parts would be nutrition, exercise, and and the balloon, and you throw in there a, with a mix of communication. And communication between us and the patient and the relationship that's developed and the accountability that's developed between us and the patient is very important in all this. So we've got a contract patient and physician type situation where the patient is responsible and the physician is responsible for the end product, which is weight loss, is that right? Absolutely correct. And we hold them accountable and we expect them to hold us accountable for success. Now, how much weight loss are we talking about in general? 30 to 50 pounds uh, is anticipated with this balloon. And if we can have the patient with us for a full year, we want more. So 30, 40, 50 pounds or more. Uh, tell me about the balloon. Uh, how do you put it down? What does it do? How do you prep the patient? It sounds pretty exciting to me. It is exciting. It's a brand new approach in the treatment of obesity, and it's going to be successful providing you have that comprehensive program. The, the balloon is wrapped and packaged into something about the size of your finger, which is placed on the end of a small tube and can be put down into the stomach during a scope and once it's there and you're sure about the position, you can inflate it with 650 cc's of fluid so that when it's in the stomach, it looks like this, which so is that, quite large. So when you put it down, it's small, but you put fluid into it, it balloons it up. Does that float around in the stomach or do you tie it down to the stomach? It's a round ball and it's free floating it's not tied to anywhere, so if the patient lies on their right or on their left, it can move a little with them, and they, they will feel that, particularly the first two or three weeks, and then they get used to it. When, when you sit down and eat food, and that's in your stomach, um, does it keep you from eating so much? The principal way this works is that it fills up the stomach so that patients will eat about a third of what they usually eat and feel full already. So it's the fullness and the sensation of what we call satiety that uh, encourages the weight loss. So do they eat three meals a day? Do they snack? Uh... Generally, we encourage them to eat three regular meals a day. And we monitor that and their calorie intake and we monitor their activity. So you put down this balloon through the mouth, through the throat with a scope, endoscope, is that the way it's put down? Yes. The patient is sedated. They don't feel anything. They don't remember. We go down with the scope to take a look. If everything looks good, then we put down another small tube with the balloon on the end of it, inflate it, detach it, and then pull everything out, leave the balloon in place. That's so It's quite remarkable. Uh, how long do you keep the balloon in there? Six months. Uh, the FDA will allow us to keep this in for six months. The major weight loss is in the first month or two. Then it kind of tapers off. We take it out at six months and we watch the patient intensely to be sure that they are adhering to diet and exercise. Now, does this balloon stretch the stomach so that when you take it out, they, they've got a stretched stomach that wants to receive more food? No, the stomach ordinarily could handle two or three of these balloons wow. in it. So when it's empty, it will compress into something not much bigger than my hand, but when it's full, it's big like this. 
the balloon does nothing permanent to change the anatomy or the function of the stomach. So why does the balloon stay in the stomach? Why doesn't it come up into the esophagus? And why doesn't it go through the duodenum into the small bowel? It's too big. It's ah. too big to come up and it's too big to go out. So it stays around and floats. Stays there. <laughs> until yeah. you take it out. Now, how yes. do you take it out? You can go down with a scope, uh, take a look around, be sure the stomach is empty of fluid. And then you can take a small catheter and stick it through the balloon and suction out the fluid. Once it's collapsed, you can grab the balloon and pull everything out. It's a very um, smooth operation. And tell me about the comprehensive program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very exciting and it looks to me like, you know, you've got everything lined up about putting the balloon down in the stomach, filling it up, making it where you're full easy. So how does the patient exercise and how do you get them to be accountable for that? And how do you handle nutrition? Well, you put your finger on that. This is only one part. This will jumpstart weight loss. But unless you have that comprehensive program, communication, dietary, nutritional instruction, exercise, physiology, until you have all those together, you're not going to be successful. Linking those together through communication is critical. And we will be using such things as MyFitnessPal on a phone app and the Fitbit that you wear on your wrist to measure your exercise. They all feed back. We can monitor both caloric intake, weight, and exercise remotely and then communicate with our patients two or three times a week. So it's an intense monitoring and communication, training the patients to be used to eating smaller amounts of food because they've got this thing in here and they can't eat a lot. And once they learn that, then they, we follow them closely after this is removed to monitor to be sure they are compliant with the small meal intake. That, that, it works. Uh, it really sounds amazing. Let's, in order to have, do you have, a, have to have a dietitian? Are they in-house? Does somebody teach them when they come? How do you prepare the patient to get ready to have the balloon in there? What do they have to do before that? Are those all, all questions that you answer? We talk to the patients ahead of time and we educate them thoroughly about the balloon and some of the side effects with that, about the importance for communication we have them discuss with and, and uh, develop a relationship long-term with a uh, dietitian. So tell me about if a patient wants to lose this weight, how do you prepare them for the endoscope right off the bat? Who's a candidate? Well, education is the most important thing and the patient needs to understand that this is a long-term commitment between them and us. But the actual procedure is very simple to prepare for. All the patient has to do is have nothing by mouth for 10 hours. Then we can go down with the scope and insert this, inflate it, and pull the scope out, and it's over. It doesn't take very long to do it. Patient goes home the same day. They will feel something in their stomach. Uh, how much does this weigh? That weighs 1.3 pounds. 1.3 pounds, that doesn't seem like very much, but if it's pulling down with gravity or when I lay down, it pushes up, I bet it'd be an unusual feeling. It is, it's a feeling of a weight and a fullness in your stomach. Some people describe it as a, a weight, some people say discomfort, and it will be present for three to five days and then they gradually get used to it. Side effects? Side effects are common. Um, they are short term. They last three to five days. Almost everyone will have nausea and almost three quarters will vomit some degree. Some people call it mild, some people moderate, and an occasional person will say, this is so severe that I don't want to keep it, but that's rare. 
So that would sound logical. There's something down in the stomach. It's full in there. The body says, hey, it's not supposed to be in there. Let's right. barf it up. So nausea and vomiting. Uh, any other problems handling foods, certain kind of foods? Well, nausea, vomiting, and the discomfort. Those are the three common side effects. Uh, in terms of handling foods, you start with clear liquids, three days, full liquids, three days, two to three days, and then you move to soft foods. And by two weeks, you're probably into a regular diet, but it's portion controlled. That will not allow you to eat a full meal. You'll eat about one third and then you'll be full. Yeah, and that's, that's great. We all know when we sit down and eat and we have second help, oh, I wish I hadn't eaten so much. And we have that <laughs> terrible full feeling like, you know, we ate too much food. So this is gonna help us eat less food because the stomach will be full. Uh, then how do we know what food to put down in our stomach? You, you say a liquid diet, then a soft diet, and then we're used to it. Then what happens? How do we know what kind of foods to eat? The dietitian is very helpful in that regard because they will provide the instructions on a well-balanced, rounded meal, proper protein and fat and carbohydrate intake. Does this keep people from feeling hungry during the day? Do you still get hungry? No, uh, most people do not get hungry. Uh, they, they have this fullness in their stomach and they don't get hungry. Um, at mealtime, they'll eat, but it's not the kind of eating that they used to do. Uh, if they overeat, what happens? They'll vomit. Okay, so it just won't go in there and, That's right. and uh, comes back up. So exercise, when can you start exercise? Next day or a week later? Weight loss is a combination of dietary restriction and food restriction, which the balloon will do, but you have to exercise. And we have an exercise physiologist who develops an individual program for you or you, and that program can start as soon as the patient feels like they want to. It's typically about 10 days after this uh, before they'll start their exercise program. No exercise that they can do, no food they can eat will injure that balloon. So they can exercise, they can build to whatever they want to, marathon or whatever. Somebody is morbidly obese. They have a BMI that's very high. And somebody that's just obese, they've got a BMI that's too big. Is there a difference in those two patients? Somebody that is, weighs 450 pounds or somebody that weighs 296 pounds? There's a big difference. The, first off, the FDA and its regulations require that we limit this to use in patients with a BMI of 30 to 40. That is somebody who's about 100 pounds or less overweight. For the really large people that are a couple hundred pounds, uh, the 350, 450 people, we work with them on a, an intense dietary exercise program, get their BMI down to where we can use this, and then we place the balloon. I bet, I bet you that's a, a big day for somebody that's really obese, a tense program, and then they're able to use this to help them lose weight more rapidly? Oh, oh yes, more rapidly. They'll lose weight with that uh, quickly. So is there any, we call it the word invasiveness, surgery. So with this, I haven't seen any place where you've had to do any kind of surgery. Is, is that? You don't do surgery. This is totally reversible. You put it down and you take it out with a scope and there's no surgery. If there were a complication, the balloon could deflate maybe half or even all of it and it would pass. It, if it passes, it almost always goes all the way through the GI tract, but there is a remote possibility it could hang up somewhere with an adhesion or in the anatomy sure. of the small bowel. That, if that were to occur, it would be a blockage and would require surgery, but that's rare. What about the poor person that's not 100 pounds overweight, but they're 56.4% over, uh, pounds overweight? What, what, can, you, can you not do that with them too? Because there they would be losing the weight or do you have to follow 
strictly FDA or what? No, we will, there, there is going to be a significant number of people who are 30 to 50 pounds yeah. overweight that need help and they just can't get beyond that and this will be ideal for those people. The mother of the bride who wants to lose 30 pounds for the sure. wedding or somebody who's got early onset diabetes who needs to lose 30 or 50 pounds to bring their, their sugar down to normal. Perfect. Somebody that's got high blood pressure, somebody that's got sleep apnea, somebody that uh, can't exercise because they're too heavy. The, the list goes on and on, on, and, on. and on about yes. the people that need to lose weight in the United States. And, and this is a huge aid. Um, can, if you, if it, you can only leave it in six months and you take it out, how, how long before you can put it back in again? Mm, 24 hours. Oh, so 20 you can put it in right away. Okay, so, but you do have to take it out? You to have to take it out because the longer that balloon is left inside, the greater the risk of it deflating. So you take it out. If the patient begins to gain weight again, you put it back down. Obesity is a lifelong disease and you have to treat it over a lifetime. And this will be significant help. I just think that's, well, what we say is cool. I, I, <laughs> you know, I think everybody needs that help sometimes and here's something that we can provide. Uh, Dr. Gene, thank you so much for coming to the Dr. Bob Show. I'm very excited about the possibilities this has to improve the health and fitness of our United States. Thank you.